Does zoning matter? Who cares what I do with my property? This is one of the questions we're gonna to tackle today because it's important. If you have a unique idea or you would like to do something with your property, you might wanna find out what the zoning will allow before you do it and find out it's something that you need to change. That's what we're gonna to tackle today. If you like content like this, please consider subscribing to our channel. Give us a comment and tell us what you know about zoning or how that's affected you either positively or negatively, or shoot us a question that we can answer and do another video on. Today we're going to cover the generalities on zoning. We'll start first with a definition of what zoning actually is. Okay, so we'll go to Merriam-Webster and we'll look at this. It says the act or the process of partitioning a city, town, or borough into zones reserved for different purposes such as residences or businesses. Uh, so that's basically what that's going to look like. So it's just, you know, the go local government makes rules about my stuff. If you live in an HOA community, you probably think of the county or the city less in this capacity and think a lot more about the HOA because usually they're way more restrictive. Uh, and they put in restrictive covenants that can control your grass height and all kinds of additional stuff, color of your house, whether you can put a fence up, what trees you can cut down. Those are all kinds of different stuff from that perspective. But we're gonna talk about zoning today. So most residential houses will fall under residential classifications. There are multiple different kinds of residential classifications. Depending on what county you live in, they'll use different letters or numbers. And in fact, in Cherokee County, they had um, one set of letters and numbers and they did a lot of redefining on it. So let's show you the screen and uh, let you take a look at what that looks like. So what you can see here uh, on the screen, screen here is going to be what the 1969 ordinances as amended were and what the, uh, the resolution in 1992 is. Here is your general residential zonings, which is gonna be this, you know, uh, anything with an R in front of it walking up and kind of what they were and what they were adapted to. Now you still have to look up and see what these generally are. When you see uh, like an R40, it usually means an acre or under for a house. And then the smaller the number, the smaller the lot, the bigger the number, the bigger the lot. The agricultural ones are also um, residential houses in a lot of cases. Being zoned ag does not mean that you have a farm necessarily. And so that's something I wanna be clear on. You can find this on the, uh, the zoning website. So here's uh, zoning uh, Cherokee County for uh, what their ordinances, table of contents, pretty much anything you ever didn't wanna know about zoning. So that's it. We're not gonna uh, go any further into that particular boring part of this. Um, but the questions that come up is like, for example, if I'm in any of the R classifications, can I run a home-based business? And the answer is, well, it depends, right? You're gonna wanna speak to a legal expert because the use case will actually be the, uh, the defining factor. I'll give you a for instance. If you're probably gonna have a home-based office and run a direct sales business like a Mary Kay, uh, or um, any other direct sales where you have a product going out of and you're basically in your office making phone calls, you probably can do that because you can have a home-based office and do work from home. I work from home in real estate. Uh, the difference is, is whether or not you're bringing in the public. Like, uh, I don't have a real estate office at my house per se because I'm not bringing the public into my house to talk with them about buyer's consultations and stuff like that. We have a commercial office for that purpose. Yet, I do have an office at home where I do work for my clients, finding them houses, negotiating contracts, and doing all that kind of stuff. So it's a little bit different. Where you run into this is, let's say you have something on a couple acres and you have a large barn outbuilding and you're a mechanic. Um, now, if you're a mechanic and you have a hobby of restoring vehicles, let's just say you buy one 1969 Mustang Fastback, stick it in uh, this thing and over the course of your weekends and nights, you basically rehab this and eventually you sell it and you make a profit on it. That's probably gonna be a different story than you have a shingle hung there or even not a shingle, but you put it online and people come to you and say, hey, I'm here, can you fix my car? In a residential setting, that's gonna be a problem because it doesn't, it's not a covered use. Now, the break between those two things isn't going to be as clean of a line as you want it to be, but here's how they tend to think and lean about uh, whether it's a for or an against, has a lot to do with public safety. 
and protecting the rights of the other homeowners around you. So those are two huge balancing factors. If you're trying to run a factory out of a 3,000 square foot metal building that happens to be on your two acre parcel, um, and it's making a lot of noise affecting all the neighbors, it's gonna be an issue unless it's zoned to be able to be a manufacturing operation. So kind of simple uh, as far as that goes. The other thing is, is whether you're bringing the public in. So we had a situation with a piece of real estate on 10 acres in which a ministry uh, wanted to, the people that lived in the main house, uh, basically the pastors of the ministry wanted to run a retreat style ministry uh, out of a, um, a, a separate structure that was on their 10 acres. Well, according to the zoning in Cherokee County, uh, with that amount of acreage and the fact that it was zoned agricultural, if it falls under church or ministry, uh, then it's able to be done without having to change the zoning. Now, that doesn't mean they can immediately just invite in the public because now the building has to somehow conform to commercial specs because of public safety issues, which we will do a separate video on that particular story because it's an interesting one. Um, if you were going to take that same piece of property and turn it into a wedding venue, then you would have to go through planning and zoning uh, to uh, get an alteration of the zoning. Now, it may not just be altering it from agricultural. It may be what's called a special use permit. And special use would be for that particular owner for that purpose without changing the zoning. But you still have to do the public notices. There has to be a hearing. The neighbors get to be heard on it. Uh, the commission votes on it. And then they either say yes or no and provide restrictions to what can be done with that particular piece of property. So even if zoning allows and says, hey, you can do this, there's still other hurdles to jump through. Generally speaking, if it was built as a house and was zoned anywhere in the agricultural or in the, the residential zonings, these things would show to be uh, perfect use cases for this. So if you have a piece of real estate and you're wondering if your zoning is going to be affected, whether or not you can use it for the purposes you want, give us a call. Now that purpose can be for business, like we just talked about. It can even be, I want to live here, but I want to build a second house on my property or a outbuilding that has a living quarters for a family member to be there. And these are all going to be um, zoning questions that you're gonna to wanna to say, is it allowed to be done? And so if you have one, send us the address. You can uh, private message us and uh, direct message us and we will go ahead and help you find the right answers to that. Thank you so much and we'll see you next time.